I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video which responds to one of Steven Pinker's criticisms of memetics, the one where he compares memes to viruses. In my book on memetics, which is out now, I take a look at some of the critics and criticisms of memetics, and Steven Pinker is one of the critics. Pinker has expressed a number of objections to memetics in a 2009 Harvard lecture, and here we will look at his claim that a viral interpretation of memetics can't be right because words lack adaptations to evade the host's immune system. So, here is Stephen. Um, I'll make uh, one other point before concluding, which is the other possible escape hatch is that, okay, so uh, bits of culture, memes, art, like genes, literally, instead they're like parasites. And that is uh, yet another emendation uh, of the analogy between biological and cultural evolution. Okay, so to clear some basic things up, first of all, in memetics, memes are like genes. They're cultural genes. That's why the term meme is similar to the term gene. However, there are things in memetics which resemble viruses. Just as with organic viruses, a memetic virus is typically composed of a whole bunch of memes and some other components which make up its phenotype. Cultural parasites are not yet another emendation of the analogy between cultural and biological evolution, but rather simply a consequence of the relationship between those two things. Okay, so now back to Stephen's objections. I think that there's a problem with that as well, which is that in the biological case, we know that organisms evolve defenses against parasites, skin and immune systems and uh, various other defenses, tissues that you slough off. Uh, and as a result of this co-evolutionary arms race, parasites de uh, evolve a kind of complexity that is necessary to defeat the defenses of the host. It's hard to see how a word would uh, have the kind of complexity that by itself could burrow into our brains evading uh, our, def our defenses, because it's so easy to, to defend against sheer words. Uh, we know from uh, many decades of the study of language comprehension that sentences don't just embed themselves in our brains causing us to believe every sentence that we hear. <clears throat> the whole process of Gracian implicature uh, is a illustration of how a very long chain of inference and computation takes place before we figure out what to do with a particular sentence that burrows into our uh, ears. If language was really just an undefended gaping hole by which words could enter, multiply, and take us over, it's not clear why we would have evolved language in the first place, making us sitting ducks for exploitation by others. Okay, so words are not much like parasites. In this segment, Pink seems to be some way off base to me. The ideas he is criticizing are some pretty strange ones and are certainly nothing like my own views. Memetics allows for symbiotes that are mutualists, parasites, or commensalists. There is no parasite-only version of memetics. Most individual words would be classified as memetic mutualists rather than memetic parasites, since they benefit the host by helping them to communicate, and that explains why we have language. However, if you look at word combinations, then there are both mutualist and parasitic entities to be found, and then we can consider objections to do with parasites. So, here's one example of a mutualist sentence. The square on the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So that's the Pythagorean theorem, and knowledge of it is probably usually beneficial to its host. An example of a more parasitic sentence would be, There's an invisible sky daddy who loves you, knows everything you do, and can save your immortal soul from damnation. So the most important thing you can do in your life is to use this message to warn other people about how to avoid eternal hellfire by bringing them into his loving embrace. This idea tends to screw up its host by diverting resources which would otherwise be devoted to host reproduction into the reproduction of the parasitic piece of text. However, note that this idea is a complex one. Pinker's objection that a mere word lacks the adaptive complexity required to overcome the host's immune system doesn't have much force here, because this parasite obviously has considerable adaptive complexity, especially when you consider the whole memeplex that it would typically be surrounded with in the wild. Also, the sections which aim to deactivate the host's immune system are really rather obvious, with references to love, rescue, embracing, and appeals to family ties. The reason deleterious memeplexes can evade host immune systems is essentially much the same for memes as it is for organic parasites. It is not as easy as all that to defend against sheer words. 
words arrange themselves into a vast number of possible sentences and encoding which ones are good and which ones are bad in the genome and covering all the world's languages would involve storing an enormous quantity of information there and basically there just isn't enough space. Also, verbally transmitted ideas evolve quickly, whereas the host's immune system is slower to respond and adapt, and it has to cope with a very large number of possible attackers, and so that represents a considerable burden on it. And then lastly, in the case of transmitted memes, confronting a host's immune system, there's a twist that does not apply to organic immune systems, and which again hampers the immune system's ability to fully defend its host. Organic immune systems just reject anything that's alien, However, memes are, on average, beneficial, and letting the good ones through while rejecting the bad ones is a very difficult problem. If we knew in advance which ideas were the good ones, then we wouldn't need to rely on cultural transmission in the first place. We could just invent the good ideas. However, we don't know that, so we do the best that we can using heuristics about who best to copy from, and inevitably some bad memes get through the net. The price we pay for getting lots of good ideas culturally is that some bad ones make it past our defences. However, that's better than beefing up our immune defences, since that would stop lots of good ideas from reaching us too. Enjoy!